Hello and welcome to another AnyNode tutorial. Please sit back and relax and we invite you to watch as we tell you more about the integration and configuration of a ZIP provider to an existing ZIP PBX using AnyNode. A ZIP endpoint is named as a node in the AnyNode configuration. In our example, we use a Cisco Unified Communications Manager as a ZIP PBX and ZIPGate as the ZIP provider. For a successful setup, you need to have the following in place. A ZIP PBX pre-configured with routes to allow it to communicate with any node. An installation of any node on a Windows or Linux machine, including a valid license key. Remember that the machine on which any node is installed can be a virtual machine. Access into the ZIP provider's network, such as an IP address that any node can use to route calls out to the provider, and an external facing IP address configured in any node that the provider can use to route calls into any node. If you will be using ZIP over TLS, you will need a valid signed certificate as well. Access data for the ZIP provider if the provider requires that, such as a username and password. Please watch the license overview video for any node as a guide to show you whether you have installed a valid license correctly. We start with a freshly installed AnyNode where no nodes or routing domains are configured. In this example, we have already installed a license. To simplify connecting two nodes to each other, we use the scenario wizard, which saves a lot of time. We start by clicking on the wizard choice in the AnyNode front end. We select the appropriate scenario, in this case, VoIP provider on one side and PBX or VoIP system on the other side. After we click Start to begin the configuration, we first configure the Voice over IP provider, which is selected by default. Click the Configure button. We can select a pre-configured Voice over IP provider from this list. If our Voice over IP provider does not appear in the list, we would choose Other VoIP provider which appears at the top of the list. We will use the selection for zip gate trunking in our example. We click zip gate trunking, then click next. Now we configure the network controller, whether an existing controller or we are creating a new controller. Here you also choose if the network is running IP version 4 or IP version 6. The IP address of your controller needs to be a static IP. And here we can leave the reverse DNS lookup value at the default. Moving on to the ports configuration, we will use all of the default values for the ports in our example. Clicking Next and moving on to the NAT Traversal configuration, as we do not need to configure any of the settings here, we will click Next to move on. The remote zip domain is already entered by the wizard. If we selected Other VoIP provider earlier in the wizard configuration, it would be necessary to enter the appropriate data for the provider at this point. This also applies to the next entries under Proxy and Registrar. Your provider would need to tell you what the appropriate values are. We insert the appropriate user data into the credentials or we would select the No Credentials Needed option if none were needed. 
to reiterate if you need credentials or do not need them, your provider needs to tell you that and if they need credentials, they need to tell you what those are. The next two steps in the configuration wizard are for setting up any desired manipulations of digits for incoming calls, outgoing calls or both. First we come to the configuration for any manipulations of digits for incoming calls. For example, a 0049 can be a plus 49. Using add, this number manipulation would be added. However, we do not need any number manipulations in our example. So we click next here. For outgoing calls, the wizard has already inserted a default manipulation for our chosen provider zip gate. This manipulation configures any node so that first digit will be deleted in all calls that begin with a plus as ZipGate does not accept this format. Finally, we move on to the display name for any node in the wizard. The display name can be anything you wish. This is the name of the node that will be shown in any node. The green check shows us a successful configuration. Now we configure the voice over IP system in the AnyNode wizard. Again, we can select any voice over IP system from the list or we can select other VoIP system if the system does not appear in the list. In our case, we choose a predefined system, the Cisco Unified Communications Manager. Moving on the configuration, we now select a network controller for our VoIP system or we can create one if desired. In our example, we will use the same network controller that we configured for our zip gate trunk. If any node was used as a session border controller, we would have two different network controllers, one internal facing and one external facing. In that case, we would have two IP addresses here. In ports, we enter a value of 5080 for the UDP TCP port. This is the port which is already set in the Cisco. The port range configuration would be used if there were a firewall between any node and the Cisco which blocks the random ports. Any node can select a port from this pool and in the firewall. You can enter an exclusion rule for this port range so that the traffic on these ports is guaranteed to be forwarded to any node. At the remote zip domain portion of the configuration, we can enter the host name here or we do it as an user-defined remote endpoint. At this point, we can configure for incoming and outgoing number manipulations again, but they are not necessary in this example. The next and final step is the routing configuration. If you are using direct routing, everything is preset. Any calls or sessions that arrive from one network are redirected to the other network. Alternatively, routing based on telephone number digits can be configured. In our example, we decide for direct routing. We are now finished with the AnyNode configuration in our example. We can now verify in the tree structure in AnyNode that we have created two new nodes, the Cisco Communications Manager node and the ZipGate Trunking node. Any needed changes can be made here. Here we have a routing domain with a routing table in which two entries already exist. To ZipGate Trunking, everything that comes from the source node Cisco goes to ZipGate Trunking. And everything that comes from ZipGate Trunking goes to Cisco Unified Communications Manager. We now confirm the entries with Commit. 
The configuration we just made is now active and ready to go. The monitor mode in any node allows a quick check of the registration to the zip provider in the menu choice Events. We can see that the registration was successful. In the menu choice Active Sessions in this example, we are now seeing the activity of an active real-time call. For testing here, we are using Cisco IP phone to dial a number. The call is successfully put through any node. Now we hang up and we have completed the test successfully. You can see that the call remains for 5 seconds in order to facilitate monitoring for our example. We can check the status of the finished call again in the call history. Should it become known that more call number manipulations are necessary at this point, we can also make the necessary configuration entries in the individual nodes. Using the Add function in the zip node menu, we can configure manipulations separately for incoming and outgoing calls. The flow is like this. A call comes in from a zip provider. Then the call is put through the incoming manipulation table and the phone numbers are manipulated or changed accordingly. Then the call is processed by the internal AnyNode router where the decision of where to route the call is made. In our example, the call goes to the Cisco. The call goes back to the table of outgoing manipulations for the Cisco. We can enter changes in the phone number again here if desired. If you use Microsoft Link or Skype for Business, we recommend that all calls arrive with a plus in the call at the router. There will be no plus in the phone number for calls from the provider ZipGate trunking. Therefore, we add a number manipulation. If a 00 number arrives, it will be replaced by a plus. In our example with Cisco, this is, as mentioned earlier, not necessary. This concludes our video tutorial. We hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. Please visit us on our website. We thank you for watching and have a pleasant day.